Go ahead. Great. I'm Jacob Cusky. I'm Madeline Harvey. This is our grandparents, John, Sharon, Harvey. So, what was your average daily routine growing up? Uh, for me, my mother worked, and I used to get up every morning and make my dad bacon and eggs. And he used to cut off a little corner of the toast and give me a little piece of egg, and a little piece of bacon, and a little piece of toast. That always started my day. Yes. Being a farm boy, of course, I was to get up and go out and milk the cows. And the story that I want to share with you, because I think it was quite interesting, is my dad decided that we should have a dairy cow. So he went off and bought himself a Holstein dairy cow, brought it home, put it in the barn. Uh, but he also had a sow pig in the barn. And the next morning when he went out to milk, the cow had no milk, and he couldn't figure out why. But I caught on real quick because I had to milk her. And the one morning I went out and discovered that the cow was doing my job for me. <laughs> um, is there a story that maybe your grandparents or parents told you that sticks out in your mind of their life? I've told you this one before. I'm telling you. <laughs> um, my grandfather lived in Prince Albert. This would have been about 1912. And uh, he was a widower with two daughters. And he was also a house builder. And he had to do it, you know, all by hand with the saw and the chisel and the hammer, nothing electrical. But he was building a house, and next door to that house, my grandmother was working as a housekeeper. And she had just come out from Scotland. And she had beautiful, long hair. And this one day, she had washed her hair and she was sitting out in the backyard, brushing it out and letting it dry in the sun. And my grandfather saw her, and it was love at first sight. <laughs> <laughs> they ended up married with five children. Mm -hmm. Yes, had a good life together. The story that I was told was that my grandfather, P.B. Thompson, was instrumental in having the first wheat pool elevator built in the town of Boulier, which is just down the road. Uh, he was also instrumental with some of his relatives in starting the Weekend Credit Union, which is also in Boulier. And they also built the Nerona Lutheran Church that's sitting there and still operating. Yeah. Where did each of you go to school? Do you mean when we were very young? Yep. Yes. Uh, I went to Buena Vista in Saskatoon. It's still standing. It's got two big towers, and to me it looked like a castle when I was a kid. When I went back to look at it later, it looked much smaller. But what I always appreciated about that school was there were all kinds of kids in that area. Like, there were middle class kids. There, were, there was an orphanage. The Kilburn Orphanage was there. Um, there were kids that lived along the riverbank and had beautiful big houses, lots of money. And there were kids who didn't even have running water in their houses. But everybody, like I don't recall any um, class prejudice. Yeah, everybody just enjoyed each other. They were all friends. I have a real history of going to school. First of all, at grade one, I didn't want to go to school. I was supposed to go to Eden Kelly School, and Mr. Kelly Peary, who was the teacher at the time, had to drive uh, one mile up one mile from where we lived, and my job was to walk that mile and catch a ride with Mr. Peary. Well, being as smart as I was and not wanting to go to school, I would dilly-dally, and Mr. Peary would not be able to wait long enough for me, so I had to walk back home soon caught on that I better dilly-dally walking back home too because the spanking I got was almost <laughs> worse than going to school. And then I had the good fortune or lack thereof to go to Pangar School where my mother was the teacher. And again, as young boys will do, they always got into trouble and I had to stand in the corner numerous times. Uh, 
following that, we went to into Boulier, uh, Saskatchewan, and went to school in Boulier for a couple years, and then I ended up coming to William Derby School in Strasbourg. Um, was there a favorite part of your school day, like a class or something that you did? Recess. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite part was uh, I don't. I think from about grade three up. Right as soon as we got in after lunch, the teacher had a story, and they would read like a chapter a day, and I just loved that 10 or 15 minutes of story time. And I still remember the last one that I had in grade eight. It was called Three Times and Out, and it was about a prisoner of war uh, during World War II, and he escaped twice and was caught, and the third time he got away. And I used to just die to wonder what was going to happen the next day, and you always had to wait a whole day before you got the next chapter. <laughs> All right. Who would you say was your biggest influence growing up? Probably my dad. I spent a lot of time with him. Um, we both liked to work in the garden, and we used to go and get groceries together every Saturday morning. And I just always felt really comfortable with them. Probably two people. My grandfather, P.B. Thompson, um, he used to write when I was a small child. He used to write letters and uh, encourage me to write letters back to him. And when I was at uh, teacher's college doing my teacher training, he uh, came down with prostate cancer and eventually became bedridden. And I would always go over after my classes and sit with him and hold his hand. And being the politician liking fellow that he was, he always had the radio on, tuned in to the legislative uh, sessions that were going on at the time. After that, I guess it would be Mr. Bill Derby, the principal of William Derby School. He was a man that I admired then, and I have greatest respect for him today, too. He was a wonderful individual, even though he uh, loved curling, and I liked curling, and there was a Massey Ferguson bond scale, and he had set a geotrig exam for the next morning. Uh, Eddie Decker and I, Murray Seminuk, and, and uh, I think it was uh, uh, Jim Uhl went to see him to see if he'd postponed the test for one day. He said, no, you have a decision to make, you fellas. Well, we made the wrong decision. We went curling instead of studying, and he changed the exam, we're sure of it, the next morning so that we would indeed fail the exam, which we all did. <laughs> Um, was there a specific job that you wanted to have growing up, and how did that change throughout your life? At one time I wanted to be a writer, and then I discovered it was an awful lot of work. <laughs> and uh, I also was interested in being a, a YMCA program director, but you had to go down to university in Montreal, which was not anything I could have done. And I just ended up enjoying the library and teaching. It's good. I had always thought about being a teacher. I think it's because my grandpa, P.B. Thompson, always used to encourage me and say, that's what you're going to be good at, John. So that's what I ended up doing. So what did your parents do for a living? Uh, my dad worked for what is now Saskatel. He was the city foreman in Saskatoon. And when we moved to Regina, he was the uh, director of personnel and safety. And my mom was a legal secretary. My mom and dad, they farmed together. Uh, but in the early years, mom taught school, as I have already indicated. Uh, she was a teacher in the Silton area, and that's where her and my dad met. Other than that, well, I guess when they moved into Regina, uh, and after my dad died, Mom worked at Pennington's and Reedman's, 
uh, and dad, before he died, uh, worked at the Army Navy for a little while. Um, was there a family member that you hung out with a lot other than your parents? My sisters were quite a bit older than I was. I hung out a lot with my uh, second sister, Joyce, when I was older, when I was into my teens. But uh, other than that, I didn't have cousins close around or, yeah, just Joyce when I was older. <laughs> just my grandpa when I was into teacher's college and, yeah. What would you say is your earliest mem memory? I have two. One is falling down the steps in our house in PA. <laughs> and my mom with the ringer washer. I don't know if you know those old ringer washers. You wash in the tub and there's a ringer over top of that that you run the coals through. And I can see her standing by the ringer washer going <laughs> like this as I'm rolling down the stairs. And the other one is kind of sad. It's I don't know how old I was, but maybe four. But I can remember looking through uh, a chain link fence, and it seemed to me that it was enormously high. And there were all these little kids with black hair, and I thought, why are they not playing? They were all just standing there. And I realized years later that it must have been the residential school. I was looking through the fence. I liked my dog when I was a little boy, so much so that when the dog went wandering, so did I. And I often got lost, and Mum would have to come and find me, and first of all, she'd have to get the neighbor girls to babysit my sister Penny while she came looking for me. The dog always would go back home again, but I was too stupid to follow the dog <laughs> back home again. I thought I knew my own way. Um, what is the biggest change you think that would compare with your life as a child to what it is like now? We don't have i we didn't have iPhones, we didn't have iPods, we didn't even have computers, uh, we didn't even start off with television sets. If you wanted to entertain yourself, as my brother and I did, we we had um, Tinker Toys and rulers and we get a game of hockey that we used to play in the hallway with the tinker toy button and the, and the ruler but we, we always had fun we always had something to do yeah. and our thumbs aren't growing like they might be you know <coughs> if we keep doing this yeah. I think I would agree with that that there's that has changed life a lot when I was a kid I lived in the city we went outside, we played until it was dark. In the winter time, we'd go over to the rink and they used to have a shack with a, they called it a warm-up shack. There was some kind of little furnace in it. And the kids would go and skate until bedtime and then go home. And in the summer, you played outside until it was dark. And I, well, I don't live in the city anymore, but I don't think it's like that anymore. <laughs> so what did you guys do for daily chores every morning? Well, I made my dad breakfast, as I told you. <laughs> and my mom worked full time. And so uh, I had, every week I had to do the dusting. And every day when I came home from school, I had to peel the potatoes and set the table. Not too bad. No. <laughs> like I said at the beginning, milk the cow, feed the pig and bring in wood because of course our heat was a uh, wooden coal furnace so uh, the wood box was always empty come morning having to fill it the furnace up during the night uh, was there a specific day like a celebration like a birthday or christmas that you remember well the christmas is all kind of run together to me but it's not a particular day, but what I really remember is that every summer we used to take three weeks and we'd pack up our car and we'd go. <laughs> and it was so much fun. We went all over the states and Canada. I can remember we once drove through the Nevada desert 
in the daytime because we were too stupid to know any better. There was no air conditioning in the car, of course. We never saw another car from the time we left in the morning until we stopped at night. And I remember my sisters and I fighting over who got to put their bare feet out the window because there were only two windows and there were three girls in the back seat. But we had a wonderful time on those holidays. Christmas would be the most memorable back then. And it was because you didn't, we didn't just celebrate it one day. We would always start well in advance of December 25th because, of course, you went to all of your, grand, your uncles and aunts' places and then they came to your place for the big meal. And when you got done with all the aunts and uncles, then you started with the great aunts and great uncles. Uh, and the big turkey and cabbage rolls and just Lutefisk. awesome. Lutefisk. Yes. So what would you say living conditions were like back then? Well, there are a lot of nice modern things. I, I love dishwashers and microwaves. And, but of course we didn't miss them because we didn't know there was such a thing. Um, I never felt that life was hard. Pretty much the same. Yeah. yeah. Um, is there something that you miss that you might have had when you were younger and don't do or don't have now? That you wish you had? Well, I wish I'd have had television a little bit earlier. <laughs> but I don't miss, I don't think I would have missed any of the other things. No. Hey, what did you guys do on your time off? There was no such thing. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Poor farm boy. I was a city girl. <laughs> We used to go to a movie once a week. Um, I can remember walking across the bridge in Saskatoon. We used to go to the movie, and then we'd go to this fish and chip place. And they used to put the chips in this really oily bag and pour a pile of vinegar on it. And we'd walk across the bridge in the wintertime, and it would be like 20 or 30 below. But we'd have to get our hands out to eat these, and they totally tasted wonderful. <laughs> and we used to go skating. And when I moved into the city, I used to spend a lot of time at the Y in Regina because they had a, uh, you could go swimming and they had a high school club with dances and, yeah. Actually, I should be honest and say that yes, there was free time. And one of the things that I used to do was curl with my dad because I already alluded to the fact that we curled. Um, and the other highlight was not every Saturday night, but quite a few Saturday nights, Mum and Dad would bring us into Strasbourg. And the highlight was I would get 25 cents, and I'd meet Eddie Decker and Murray Seminuck at Mrs. Lukey's restaurant, and we'd have a order of French fries with lots of vinegar on it. <laughs> That's it for my question. Yep, I've like gone through all mine too. I'd like to thank you guys for coming. Thank you. <laughs> it was a thank pleasure you. talking to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.